How's it going guys, it's a final render here and welcome to a slightly different video. I've been working really hard on the latest Fallout 4 video which I'm planning to release as a Halloween special. So I thought I'll do another quick little video here just to kind of tide you over, keep you guys informed. And also I want to do some talk on Battlefield 1. I didn't actually buy Battlefield 1, I've got to say. I got it on the EA Access trial, so you get to play 10 hours of the game and you get to play the first war story. The campaign is broken up into individual short stories which go around the entire conflict and I think if you're gonna do World War One justice that's a very good way to tell your single player campaign by having it broken up into individual stories. So I really like that even though I only saw the first war story and I've also played some of the multiplayer and stuff as well and the multiplayer take it or leave it I mean it's it's more battlefield what can I say but I really want to talk about kind of the ideas of setting a video game in World War One, and it's always kind of been a bit of a joke amongst gamers saying that if there was going to be a first world war FPS it would basically be you start the level you sit in a trench for three days artillery then comes in and then you beat the first level and it's always been a bit of a joke but it does actually make sense you know if you're going to do World War One as we know it that would be a very realistic interpretation but DICE decided to really bite the bullet so to speak and try to deliver a satisfying and fun World War One game but still being very humble about the event but still making it fun to play as a first person shooter. So here we go. This is the first level of the game. It is kind of a horde mode just to kind of introduce you to the kind of setting that we are in and it's a very humbling experience to play this first level because as I said this is a horde mode so that when you die you instantly get teleported into a different soldier's perspective so that you get to see multiple perspectives of the same battle in what is probably part of a much bigger battle that is raging for miles across. I do definitely congratulate DICE for making a quite an engaging experience in such a horrible setting which not many big companies have ever really had the courage to take on because as I said Battlefield 1 not only would it be quite hard to tell it properly from a video game perspective but also it's just one of those nastier things that most people wouldn't really want to take a punt on even financially because if you think about it World War 2 obviously has been a very successful arena for first person shooters and the main reason why we haven't seen one of those for a long time is that it became saturated and now it's gotten to the stage where the kind of sci-fi shooter which is so popular is starting to lose its kind of flavor as well so to speak you know you've got your titan falls you've got your call of duty advanced warfare your infinite warfare and they're all starting to look very identical you know i look at infinite warfare and i look at Titanfall and stuff and I don't really see too much difference aesthetically amongst them. Sure they have different gameplay features but ultimately they do all look and feel very similar so to speak. So it's been a very refreshing change to go back a hundred years and see this in a video game. And as I said not many people have tried it. There have been like some multiplayer only games like Verdun is probably the one which sticks in most people's minds as the game was trying to tackle World War One, and it did a pretty good job. It really did do a good job, but we haven't had a big budget game company attempt to do World War One, so it's really refreshing to actually see them have the courage to do that. There are some things about it which obviously aren't incredibly accurate, but then again it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. It is still a video game after all. So Some of those things is that there is a much bigger abundance of automatic weapons. As far as I'm aware, most of the soldiers would have just had simple bolt actions. But that being said, it is a video game. It's got to be fun and a very good way to not only make it a battlefield game, but also make it a fun FPS is to kind of ignore the fact that some of these weapons would have been really really rare and just throw them in there anyway for the player to use. They still have all the bolt action rifles and things like that as well but it is nice to see some of the more ferocious weapons on the battlefield and as you can see you still have a lot of the aesthetic of what we think of with World War One. It's got the rain, it's got the mud which is definitely what we think of when we think of World War One. but it does do a good job of actually putting you into the other arenas as well so that you've got green fields which haven't been touched by the conflict so far. It was really impressive to see your soldiers slowly advance through the mud and the rain until eventually you push just a little bit more forward than they have before 
and all of a sudden you're in fields which have green in them. There's no mud and rust everywhere. And it was really impressive to kind of see how they illustrated the idea of you are pushing forward. I think they really did a good job with that. And obviously from a technical perspective, it is extremely impressive. I am playing this on the PC version. I'm not sure what the graphics defaulted to. I didn't actually change it. I think it defaulted to the high settings rather than the ultra settings. And that looked really, really good. There is a tiny bit of frame rate loss because I was recording it. But when I was actually playing the game, when I wasn't recording, this is like the third time I played this level. I enjoyed it so much. I actually got a little bit of frame rate drop when recording. But when I wasn't, it ran pretty darn well on my 970, so I think they did a very good job of making a really good looking game. It is DICE after all, you know, so they kind of do take pride in their graphical fidelity, and this one is definitely no exception to the rule. The gunplay is still very refreshing in Battlefield 1. As I've already mentioned, you do get the variety of weapons that you would expect from a battlefield, even if it's not 100% accurate to the kind of soldiers on the ground of World War 1. But the guns almost feel a little bit worse than what you'd expect from a modern FPS and that is quite simply because the guns themselves weren't as good as what they are in modern FPSs. So you look at like your sci-fi shooter guns for example, they're almost pitch perfect accurate every single time. Whereas in Battlefield 1, not necessarily, like you saw it in the machine gun sections and you can see the tracers going around, they weren't exactly accurate. They dropped off an awful lot and that was because of the changes in, in weaponry. Like back then for example they still kind of had kind of rounded bullets rather than having really sharp rifle rounds so therefore they didn't have as much aerodynamic efficiency. They did have the pointier armor piercing ones but ultimately I think they did a very good job of showing that these guns weren't as good as what they would be in modern times. And also there are some really bizarre creations with the guns as well. Like they've got magazines which are fed from vertical and are huge clips. Which is very bizarre because no real army had a way to get fully automatic fire efficiently. So you see a very strange combination of almost prototype kind of weapons in a way. So it's very refreshing to see some of these more bizarre creations which came out of this conflict in action. And here we are inside one of the tanks. This is the British Mark V tank. And my gosh, did they really hit the nail on the head with the tanks in this game. The tanks have got such an imposing force on the battlefield of this game. And it really does show with the way they've kind of illustrated it. But they also did a very good job of showing how almost kind of crude they were. And how new and unproven the concept was. Because these tanks are slow. The British Mark V tank is actually pretty fast in comparison to some of the other tanks that you can get in the game and they handle when you get to drive them later on. They do handle kind of like what you would expect a very new tank. Not only are they a bit slower and sluggish but also turning is a bit more difficult and it was really impressive to see it done well like that. And as you can see you know all these soldiers were being fought back but now the tanks have rolled up and the conflict is being pushed forward and it really does a really good job of showing just how much of a just how much of a game changer these tanks were on the World War One battlefield. If the tanks didn't come out of production, then it would have been a very different story overall. Not only did they hit the nail on the head with how the tanks kind of control and how they function, but also when you're inside the tank, the sounds and the stuff that the tanks make are absolutely incredible. The DICE games have always had a very high outlook on the sound and that the sound should be realistic but also exciting and when you hear the voices of the people in the tank you know they're slightly muffled and there's an echo in there every time you hear the rounds that are kind of being ejected from the inside of a tank they clank around in the tank and you can hear them kind of rolling around on the floor of the tank as well just to kind of show that this was a really tiny and horrible confined place even if you look at you know the sights that we've got on this gun we've got almost zero visibility with this gun that we're controlling and it really did a good job of showing just how horrible it would have been inside one of these tanks but also a blessing at the same time because in world war one people would complain that when they were in the tanks like often the fumes from the engines would be circulating around inside the tank and they were horrible loud but they were bulletproof mostly, so therefore being inside one of these tanks, whilst you are a huge target, you are probably far safer than if you were on the ground. And here we can see the gas coming in, you know, the mustard gas, which thankfully isn't really so much of a thing in modern day conflict anymore. And they did a really good job of kind of balancing 
the idea of having the gas in the battlefield so that when there's gas coming into the battlefield you've got to put your gas mask on but when your gas mask is on you can't aim with your weapons down sights which obviously isn't too realistic either but that being said it does do a good job of kind of balancing it out and not only that but it also gives it a very scary aesthetic because all of a sudden now you are being so hampered by this gas coming in that the enemies are launching at you and there's almost nothing you can do about it you just got to put your mask on and hope for the best really and kind of put up with the bad circumstances you are in and now we're kind of approaching the end of the level and this is when things start to get a little more interesting a lot of the clutter and the barbed wire is starting to vanish and we've got kind of more man look at that zeppelin falling down the distance it looks incredible we start to lose a lot of the debris and it just kind of becomes an open battleground where people are just fighting in the mud and it's almost like people don't want to push forward too much because there's so much open ground so they're just kind of taking cover where they can at the back and then hoping that eventually they get a chance to slip through and that is the way you actually play this section as well you hang back try to get a little opening and then push your way forward and if i'm honest this is the moment where i realized yeah they've definitely hit world war one on the head with this because i was actually scared to push up because i knew that if i tried to push up just a little bit i would instantly be gunned down so you just over time just slowly whittling down the numbers whittling down the numbers until eventually you can make the big dash towards their kind of main front line and that is what you see me doing here i've finally seen an opening pushing forward as quick as i can but then as you get closer and closer, you're obviously in more and more danger. And you've got this slope which you've got to get over that obviously the Germans would have manufactured themselves. And just this little slope completely changed the fact that I didn't want to actually go forward. Because I knew as soon as I went over that slope, every single German on the other side of that slope would see me. But it was really immersive in that sense. And as we start to get a little bit closer, as you can see the time is slowing down because we're taking more and more damage. But also we are coming to an end of this stalemate. And this is actually where the more realistic part of World War One happens. Just artillery comes in from the Germans and just wipes out everybody. And they did a really good job of nailing the fact that there was almost no kind of there was almost no kind of desire to save the troops. They just wanted to keep them back no matter what it took. So they just used artillery on their own men. But the idea was that you would also stop the push. And as I said, they just did such a good job of nailing this feeling of World War One. And I'm pretty much the main reason I'm making this video is because I wanted to commend DICE on having the courage to take on such a bizarre setting for a video game. And I also think it was about time, really. Not only have video games kind of become the medium that they deserve to be by having more and more budget and having more and more kind of graphical fidelity to actually tell stories and show things and almost be an educational tool in some sense. Because if you think about it, World War I actually wasn't that long ago. It was 100 years ago. And, well, slightly over if you're looking at the beginning. And... It's been very bizarre to actually see it being done in a game and it being respected. Not only would it be very hard to make it in a game and make it compelling, but also there is also that idea is that it's something maybe people didn't want to touch. But because of that, a lot of people still don't know about the events of World War One. Like, I've got to admit, I'm not too familiar with the events of World War One, but the fact that they're actually able to illustrate it in this game proves that people still remember this event that still affects us today and I've really got to commend them on having the courage to actually try it because now younger people will see this event even if it's not 100% realistic they will see it they will learn about it and it's just proof that all those soldiers who died in the first world war have not been forgotten at all so as I said, this has been a kind of a casual video, and I'm not too sure if I'll do many more like this. In closing, I don't know if I'll buy Battlefield 1, because as I said, the multiplayer, eh, I'll take it or leave it. I liked the operations mode, but the kind of standard conquest and stuff, it's just standard Battlefield. But, if you enjoyed this video, let me know. I might do kind of more review -y stuff like this, if it works well. But, as I said, it was just kind of relaxed, and... Let me know what you think of Battlefield 1. Did you buy the game? As I said, I'm not sure if I'll buy it, but I definitely see why people would want to buy it. So... Thanks very much for listening, guys. This has been the final render, and you have been the audience.